Hey, Lee, this is Shauna. This is Shauna Karish with another Ask Shauna Answer. And this question comes from Lee. And being it's about donkeys, and I have this newfound love of donkeys, I'm really happy to answer this one. Okay, so here's a question. Hi, Shauna. I've used opera conditioning with all kinds of animals like chickens, a feral dog, and my big thoroughbred warm blood horses. I love the bonding and lasting effects that this kind of training creates. I've recently come upon a challenge. I've adopted four adorable mini donkeys. Oh, life couldn't be better. <laughs> no more big horses in my life these, these days. I'm discovering that donkeys have all kinds of dietary restrictions that horses don't have. If I give them treats like I would give a horse, they could founder or develop laminitis. Donkeys tend to be easy keepers and yet treats just flat out work as rewards in developing behavior. Have you found any donkey treats at work? I've been told no oats, no, no alfalfa, no molasses, no sugar-based veggies, fruits like apples, carrots, so... Hmm, any ideas? They love to be touched like most of us. They like food even more. They've learned to back up using praise and petting, and they are responsive. But I know that as I ask for more and more new behaviors, I'll need some treats to reward them for making the right choices in our sessions together. There must be something safe and yummy for them. I watched your videos with many donkeys, and these donkeys seem fine with the treats you gave them. I'd love to know if you've come across any special donkey treats or if maybe I need to not use treats with every click. And what are your secrets for working with two or three donkeys at a time? Unlike horses, these little ladies like to be together. I have been trying to keep my, on my toes and reward one of them for the behavior I want and maybe reward the others for being still. I know in time I can begin to separate and work with them one at a time. Until then, what have been your successes with working with two donkeys while teaching one specific behavior? Like pick up a foot, come forward or back up. Okay, so really great question. First of all, let's talk about the treat situation. Um, yeah, donkeys just blow up like balloons at nothing. And they're different, you know, like they do like, you can give them things like blackberry branches or bramble. Because they're, they're, they're browsers. So woody, you know, things <laughs> it doesn't seem like anything are quite um, enticing to them. But they also, these little guys have a propensity to eat all kinds of things that they shouldn't, you know, you're like, did you just try to eat a rubber mat? You know, and so we got to be a little careful with them. And they just, they'll, they'll, they'll clean the ground of all the roots. So they are quite woody and browsery and different than horses in that way. And they are very prone to blowing up like balloons. So one of the things I try to do is watch, or we try to do here, is really watch what they're eating in general. So we're maintaining a good healthy weight and not just letting them go crazy all the time. I know a lot of people, we're in California, we don't have a lot of green pastures that we put things on. It's, it's They're very dry. And so we don't really have to worry about the grass so much, but a lot of people have donkeys around grass. The grazing muzzles, sadly, are a really good way to go because they can be out and they can be going around doing things, but it minimizes how much they can eat. So I think watching their di daily dietary intake will help. I think using some of the woody, sticky things that they can eat that are, aren't, I mean, <laughs> you know, that aren't that high in value because they're not fruit. They're just blackberry branches and they quite like them and they they work that out so as a reinforcer a lot of times what we use is grass pellets so it's not very exciting but for them it is because they don't get very much so you can find um, grass pellets sometimes hay stretcher pellets go to your local feed store and kind of find out what has a low sugar low carbs you know sawdust <laughs> but something that's not you know, the something that might be really boring for some horses is really exciting to them. They quite like it and they find it pretty appetitive and so they're they're excited about that. So that's what I we use here is and we'll kind of sprinkle in some extra good things now and then and they seem to handle them on their little intermittent treat basis, but their regular diet is so regulated that it, it helps keep them at a good place and still keeping them happy. So that's where I would go there. So I think an occasional little special thing in there is okay. But And then the other thing I have to do a lot, I want to feed a handful like I do to a horse. I'm like, here's your handful of food. And I have to go down to, you know, a few little pellets. Even two little pellets for mini donkeys is actually much more plentiful than than for a big horse. So I sometimes give a bigger handful, but sometimes I give just a little bit. So it lets me stretch it out, but I have to catch myself because I start to get and grab out 
a big thing and they go, oh, no, 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 <laughs> this is much too much. So that's where I'd go with as far as the food goes. Okay, and you really tapped right into it. They like to be together. There's These two came and they were basically unhandleable. And so when we got them, we had a lot to do and they didn't like people. They didn't find safety in people. The one was a little more people oriented than the other, but the other then was braver about other stuff, but not people stuff. So they kind of could lend themselves to the fear or their boldness. So it, having them together was really a key. So if they could be together, they could compromise and work things out. Well, I taught these two little donkeys to go, they stationed beside me. So one always goes to my right side or my left side, one always goes to my right side. That's how it is. So when I stand there, you can see them sort themselves out and get to the right position. So I started by teaching them just to stand on either side of me so that I could turn to one and deal with them and still be reinforcing the one for standing and letting me do something because realizing in the beginning, they would want to go, well, what about me? What about me? And you know, then they're all out of position. So I really kind of worked on, and then I'd walk a few steps and stop. So they had to kind of resort it out. Then I'd like just touch the one, then reinforce them both until I built up my own activity between them where they learn, ignore what she's doing and just wait here. So that was really kind of a big key to doing that. And now when I'm with them, they just sandwich me. You know, they come in and they squish me. They're almost leaning on me and you're, it's cute. But you're like, but thank goodness you're not 1,200 pounds. <laughs> but anyway, so that is where I, um, this that is what wor has worked for the two donkeys. If you're going to have three, I would go to having stationing places, you know, where they have stationary targets. With the otters, we taught them, they all went to their own rocks, and they just stayed on their rock until they were called away. Um, if they're very fearful, the having them next to you and next to each other offered a lot of comfort now they're quite bold i mean they're just you, you could do you know we float teeth vets come they get their feet handled they just can't wait to be by their people when they didn't that didn't used to be you know it used to be we had to drop to the ground all the time like if they got nervous i'm like everybody on the ground and we'd all get down low and then they got bolder because their association with people standing was not so comfortable for them so being low helped them quite a bit and and i've heard um one gal saying that she's really had problems with the donkeys when they come in if you got low it was well they sat in a chair which i think is different than sitting on the ground but if you sat in a chair that was off-putting to them but i think it depends on their history i think if they don't know humans that might seem weird but i think if they do have a history with humans the lower you get the less you know people probably loomed over them did stuff a lot for the donkeys i worked with so standing people was kind of scary but people sitting on the ground and when i sit on the ground i just try to look relaxed like i have no intention of doing things i'm not squatting like i might spring i'm seated so that was one of the things i could do but again these were very fearful donkeys i didn't feel like they're going to come kick me in the head or anything you always have that to worry about so with the two or the three or the four so the two side by side is great and they had their particular side they knew about. So that worked great. But if I had three, I think I would teach them to go to their little stations. And maybe their stations aren't far. Maybe you just put little mats around you, you know, like three little mats or four little mats. Or you teach them to go over and hold on stationary targets where they have a specific place where they can see that target. They go to it. And they know I stay right here. So different things you could do and teach that stationing. Because with the marine mammals, we worked with social animals all the time. And it, so it's a big group. You know, you've got four animals, eight animals, they're all together and you needed everybody. So the very first thing they learned was stationing and separations. So they knew just to stay in their spot, you could call one over, do stuff with it. You reinforced everybody quite a bit. You didn't neglect them because that was a very big behavior. As time goes on, you could do more with the one and the random one was fine. But at the very beginning, you know, it's a little, you're a little all over the place. So a little kinetic, but it works, you know, they get it, they get it sorted out pretty quickly. So that is what, and a little tip with that, if you're going to have them a little bit further apart, I would have a feed tub by either, each of them, so that you can toss food from a little bit further away into their feed tub. So they learn just wait over here, the food is coming. And another tip in there, working social animals, feed, if you can tell, ours seem really even as far as who's gonna displace who. Some days it's one, one day it's another, they kind of seem more balanced about that. But if you know that one tends to be the displacer, I tend to feed the, the displace E first. So the displace er learns that they have to wait 
until that one eats and then they can eat. So let's say this is the one that's the more assertive one that's going to chase everybody around. I'm kind of like this. Feed, 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 feed. So it's more about the attention on that one at first so that they learn that the other's eating is a good thing and not that I should go chase them away and steal their food and displace them and all that kind of shenanigans that they can come up with. So I hope that helps you out. And then just teach, as you get that stationing worked out, it gives you time to then work on one behavior at a time. So even with the two beside me, I could work and the other will kind of stay there. But I was always working from between them because it was mostly husbandry stuff we were really working at in the very beginning. And then responsiveness to tactile. If I ask you to move over, can you move over, up, back, whatever it is. So, so those are some, that's some food for thought. Anyway, so I'd love to hear progress report how your doggies are doing because ever since these little two, I just have a thing. I just have a love affair with those little mini donkeys. I just, every day I go out and tell them how much I love them. And they're, they're my clients. They're not even mine. So I'll miss them. <laughs> anyway, so I do quite have a special spot for them. I think donkeys are oftentimes misunderstood when they're really quite bright and quite easy to work with. I find them to be thoughtful. So they don't, you can't just push them into something. You have to ask them to do something. And give them time to process but when they process they're like um okay i'm good with this but yeah but a lot of times people want to make them do stuff and that just doesn't really seem to facilitate good learning for them anyway lee please keep me posted i'd love to hear an update if you or anybody else has questions for ask shauna go to my uh shauna or ask or uh I think it's askshauna.com, or if you can't get through there, then go to on-target-training.com. And there is an Ask Shauna page on my website. So you can go there, and it will give you a place to ask questions, submit questions, and then I can ask them. But furthermore, for those of you who don't know yet, we have something called Connection Training, which is an online home study course. So if you want to learn more about positive reinforcement, how to implement it in the right way, because you can get it wrong, just like any other training, to, uh, there's some great, it's a great community, a safe place for learning. So for those of you that are interested in that, you can go to connectiontraining.com. All right, that's it for now. So as I said, Lee, please keep me posted. And if you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask, but I'd like to hear about your progress or your challenges and and I continue learning from each and every one of you out there. All right. Thanks, Lee. Bye.